hello 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 everyone if you can see us now and if you can hear us i thank you for your patience we've been having te uh, uh, technical difficulties and um thank you for your patience and let's see whether we can we're able to see yeah i think so but anyway thank you everyone for joining us and we are heading to beginning our show this is christy iwuchuku's brilliant tv show my name is christy iwuchuku and i help women use their stories to get seen and paid in the marketplace i am super super excited for this episode of christy iwuchuku's brilliant tv show so what do we do at this show this is where we spotlight today's business leaders entrepreneurs and most unique individuals to give you tips so that you can enhance your personal and business life. So I'm super excited for today's show because we've been out for quite a while and we're basically just coming out and doing our first show for the, for the year today. So I would love for you guys to go ahead and put in the comment section, tell me your name and what part of the world that you are watching us from. That's right, tell us your name and what part of the world that you are watching us from. We do this show every Monday at 6 p.m. Sometimes though, we do a special show. As you know, I have guests from all over the world and sometimes it's because of the time difference, we do it on a different time. But I will always let you guys know what time it will be. So, Stay tuned, invite someone else and share this message, this video, this episode today. I appreciate each and every one of you and I want you to stay till the end of this video. So without further ado, I am going to introduce our next guest today. Our guest today is Rosemary Bond. So who is she? She's an, a global speaker and she helps entrepreneur with confidence being on the stage or in their personal life. So help me welcome Rosemary Barn. Rosemary, are you there? I am here. Thank you welcome. for that lovely introduction, Christy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. And thank you for your patience. We've been trying to hash out this uh, technical difficulty and you so patiently waiting. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. My you mantra is- met last year at um, where? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. That's right. We met at uh, Tanya Hoffman's Public yes. Speakers Association Conference, and we've been yes. connecting ever since. So it was really nice uh, meeting you. And I can't wait for next year. We're going to London this year, but unfortunately, I don't think I'll be going to London this year, but definitely next year, I'll most likely see you again at the conference. And um, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, my pleasure. So tell the audience, for those of us that don't know who you are, tell the audience a little bit about who Rosemary is. Wow, that's a hard question. Uh, it depends for whom. We, we all take on, we all wear different hats. Many of us wear more hats than we can count. Primarily, Confidence Stages was created to assist people with uh, acquiring confidence for no matter what stage they're in or what stage they have to be on. Public speaking is one of the greatest fears of humankind. It, it varies between death and having to speak, death and having to speak. Uh, Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld was doing a comic routine when he said, for most people having to go to a funeral they would rather be in the casket than having to give the eulogy. When I thought then of confident stages, my thought was, if I can help people conquer the fear of public speaking, and since it's such a massive fear, if we can conquer that, what else can we not do? That's not to say that that's all I do. Uh, I've, written, I've written three books, all international bestsellers, wahoo! The first one is confident public speaking, being heard above the noise, and I'm going to hide behind it. Uh -huh. This one is a step-by-step -step procedures manual 
for what to do when you have to speak, what not to do when you have to speak, and all kinds of things that surround it. So this is a lovely book. And I have to say that I'm thrilled to say it was suggested as the new textbook for public speaking as they've just been reintroduced in the British Columbia Canada guide, uh, it's curriculum. The second book that I wrote is Confident Leadership in 21st Century Business. Confidence comes in many stages. How do we, how do we bridge the gaps between the four or five different generations that can be currently working under one corporate roof? Our values have changed over time. This book discusses how to make your leadership style work in today's world. And number three, uh, Confident Reinvention. This one just got published uh, in March. This is about mm, change happens. When it happens to us, we call it <clears throat> change. When we instigate the innovation, the reinvention, the transformation, then it's all about reinventing ourselves and we take control of that. So that's what the, the, the trilogy of confidence series is about, all of, the, all of which have to do with confidence. Awesome, awesome, I love that. So um, we, we're gonna talk about a little bit more about your book later, but, but let's dive into this conversation today because I Absolutely. know the audience are really waiting. When people see people like you, that has gotten a little bit higher than where they are. Oftentimes, you don't really know how it has been, where mm. it all began with that person. What you've seen is where the person is at this level. But I've always said it is in the journey that you learn your greatest lesson. Can you take us back how it all began? What was that defining moment for you and how you come to be this brilliant? that show it now? How has it been for you? Journeys as they are, are circuitous. We often fall into what we're doing rather than plot a course for it. The trick is to take it all with grace, learn from it, uh, gather every bit of knowledge you can out of it, and then carry on with your new armament. Oh, I was raised hmm, by the most loving people in the world. My parents know how to do two things very well. One, they know how to work. And two, they know how to love. They firmly believed that if, and they do to this day at 90 years old, that if a child shows interest in anything, they should be encouraged to pursue it to as far as they want to take it. My mother was seriously disappointed when I was born because she wanted a cuddly little girl and I'm not that. <laughs> uh, she wanted the baby to cuddle and, 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 and I would have none of it, none of it. So it wasn't really surprising that while she wanted me to stay in the house and learn to cook and go into the garden and pull weeds, I already knew how to do those things. Thank you very much. I wanted to be out on the tractor plowing the fields. Well, it wasn't long before my dad put me on the little tractor and I was harrowing the fields and I was the tractor master. Oh, I knew what I was doing and I was doing the fields and I was all that and a bag of chips until I took a corner too quickly at the end of a row and the harrows flipped over and started oh. climbing up on themselves and it could have been a disaster. Hmm. Stopped the tractor, felt embarrassed, felt ashamed. My father, having heard the tractor stop, comes trucking out onto the field, and all he said to me was, now is that nice? Let's fix it. I had lost my confidence right then. Mm. Prior to, I thought I had confidence. I was driving and I knew what I was doing. Mm -mm. Confidence comes from knowing you can navigate your way out of trouble. So when dad came out on the field and he showed me how to take these harrows back apart, get everything fixed, and then told me to get back on that tractor and finish the field. He gave me a chance to gain my confidence back armed with new knowledge. That's what confidence is. 
Confidence is not success after success. That just breeds complacency. Confidence comes from knowing you can get yourself out of trouble. And the only way you can do that is to have been in a little bit of trouble. My life progressed. And every time I got myself in trouble, I was so fortunate to have adults around to say, how do we fix it? Now get back in and do it some more. That taught me a great many things. First of all, that there's no problem that I can't solve, even if I need a little help, the problem is solvable. And secondly, that I had people on my side, even if I didn't know them yet. So when, when I realized that confidence was not about, I can do this and I can do that and I can do the other and I'm brilliant, I realized that confidence comes from taking chances, wise chances, but chances nonetheless. We don't learn when we succeed. Hmm. We only learn when we're outside of the comfort zone. And wow, getting yourself in trouble is outside of your comfort zone. Now, I don't mean go out and rob a bank, that kind of trouble, but it nothing does more for your confidence than to figure a way out of your problem. You know, I love what you said. Uh, we don't learn. We don't have the confidence when we have learned everything, but rather it's when you are able to get out of your comfort zone because that's where you learn the greatest. Is it comfortable? Absolutely not. But as you do it, uh, you get confident doing it. And oftentimes I think that I can only use my own journey. Being here talking to you now, and if you would have asked me years ago to do that, I would have said you're out of your mind. <laughs> and I remember when I first did my first show, I just wasn't sure it could be done. I wasn't sure that I would be able to do it because I was, rather than thinking about how successful the show would be, I was so busy thinking about what will happen if it didn't go well? What will happen if I ask people to be a guest and they said no? What will happen if I have technical difficulties, which I had? which I had today, I have sometimes, what will happen if people don't like the guests I bring on the show? What will happen? What will happen? And I continue to think about what will happen rather than thinking about what if the show goes well? What if people like it? What if everybody that I asked to be on the show shows up and actually says yes? What will happen? But you know, the same thing goes with just about everything in life that we do. There was a statistic about 83% of women, 83% of women that are in business do not make six figures, 83%. Mm -hmm. That's a huge number. Now, when I start thinking about this and I'm thinking, what may have contributed to this? And I use myself again as an example because even in my corporate work, positions will come out and you can see men that clearly do not qualify for that position, but they have no problem putting for that position at all. And I will be so busy going through line by line trying to make sure that I qualify for every single thing before I apply for it. That's a big difference between how men view it, view things, and how women view taking on challenges and position, right? And I think for me, it has a lot to do with 83% of women in business not being able to make six figures yet about 52% of women have more qualified education corporate job. So what do you have to say about that? Share your view on that. The modern trend for hiring now is to hire for attitude. You can always teach skills, which is going to put our men at a serious disadvantage mm. because they're busy they're they're busy trying to create come in and say i can i can do it no matter what you throw at me 
But that kind of an attitude can sometimes be seen as being aggressive rather than assertive. Now, the thing that women have to wrap their head around is that it's not a competition. Women uh, really must start understanding that the world has, has become increasingly right-brained. Primarily women are right-brained, men are left-brained, but nobody is all one or the other. The reason that we've had this difference in the generation gaps is because as women have become stronger and stronger and taking their rightful places, our children are receiving more and more right-brained right -brained influences. But the, the work world was staying stuck in left brain. So our women and our young people were used to the, the softer skills, the skills that can be used everywhere. Men were consistently living in logic, linear, remove emotion, run businesses that way. Now that trend is changing primarily because women are now in the decision-making chairs. Now we have people expecting to be treated like they were at home and at school with loving matriarchs and patriarchs and they go into the work world and they're not getting what the only thing they've ever known. Now that women are beginning to take their rightful places, now mentoring can happen. Now we can teach the skills as long as the attitude is right. The world is coming around to the women's way of thinking because women are forcing it. Uh, and it's uh, a, going to be a great benefit. You ever heard the saying in the past, it's only business, it's not personal? Well, women are changing that scenario. We know darn tootin' that everything is personal at some degree. How wonderful that we are building relationships instead of sign on the line. How wonderful that we're nurturing recurring clients. How, how we're much more than just in the box, that's it. So women, we have, uh, we have the advantage now. We have the advantage because we're, we're forcing the world to become aware of our strengths. So what do you, how do you think that confidence really plays into that statistic? Women are, women are so, so hypocritical. I just gave a workshop this morning for a very large beauty salon. The owner trying to make all of the, because within a beauty salon, it's one big business, mm -hmm. but inside each of the stylists is running their own mini business. In order to make the salon grow and help these individuals grow their own businesses, the owner is saying, we must put out videos. Everybody must put out videos. These people are horrified. Mm. All the stylists are going, mm -hmm. I can't look at myself without saying, ah, am I really that ugly? I can't listen to my voice without saying, that's not what I sound like. I can't watch my videos without noticing that I need to lose 30 pounds. Hmm. Convincing people that they are worthy uh -huh. to be on video, uh -huh. showing them that we, we mustn't strive for perfection. If we create a perfect video and we are perfect, that is nothing but intimidating. I'm not saying don't be professional, but perfection is not something we should be striving for. And unfortunately, women have had to struggle so hard to get to where we are that we keep aiming for perfection. Perfection moves and you can't ever reach it. So stop trying. No one appreciates perfection anyway. If we're perfect, if I'm perfect, that just makes you feel less than. How am I going to build a like, no trust and respect attitude if I'm lording over everyone that I'm perfect? We need to stop judging ourselves so harshly and get on with it. Don't let fear stand in our way. 
once you do one video and for example now today we had this terrible technological issue <laughs> but now you know that no matter what even if it takes a half an hour you have the knowledge to fix it how is that for a boost of confidence absolutely absolutely mm. i'm just gonna acknowledge one of um one of the viewers Ru. thank you for watching i appreciate you thanks for so much for watching don't forget to come back watch us we're here every monday thanks for watching and um so you know i think about my own journey confidence in in even though i can stand and deliver with confidence now it hasn't always been for me so you teach entrepreneurial confidence mm -hmm. helping women really know that no matter what no matter what journey you have been on that you can share with confidence what is the number one thing that you believe that you encounter or you coach women in that is really holding them back from doing so the vast majority of people have not ever taken the time to sit down and discover what they value hmm. not only what do they believe but how far will they go to defend those beliefs doing a values analysis uh, uh, even if you do it via a personality thing like bank or um, those things, I personally uh, use Lumina. Lumina is phenomenal. If anybody wants to know about that, please get in touch. If you go through these, you need to go through professional development in order to make yourself believe in yourself. Knowledge is power. But beyond that, you need to know what you believe in, what line you will not cross. My top value is curiosity. I need to know not only that it's a pretty rock, but what's underneath it? What can I do with it? Would it, the curiosity is my thing. That accounts for my, my need for lifelong learning. I don't know that yet, and I don't know that yet, and I haven't been there yet, and I haven't done that. But a values analysis helps you realize who you are and how deeply you believe that. Once we know that, our decisions are made for us. Our values take care of them. I have a story to share with you about that. I have a daughter who was born to be a mother. She is an earth mother. Anything that's broken or sad or needs love finds its way to her door. She lives in this tiny little home with her two daughters and husband and her menagerie mm. of damaged animals that have become adopted in her house. At the moment, she has a dog, two cats in various states of health. She has a bull snake, a mm. white one. She has a parrot and she has a crow. Wow. My daughter is raising a crow. Her daughters found this little baby bird that still had the markings of the eggshell on it. Now, baby crows are anything but pretty. They have no feathers. Their beaks are almost full size. They're loud, they're nasty, they're naked. They look like they're somebody's science experiment gone wrong. The girls brought home this crow. Now, the thing is so little and it has to eat. My daughter has taken this crow and her girls are crying and they get, you have, you can't kill the crow, you have to save the crow. So my daughter, if I drop her fed this thing, now crows have two pipes. And if you send food down the wrong one, they asphyxiate and die. Uh -huh. So she's, and so they named it Russell Crow. Now, my daughter did not have a choice about whether she was going to try and heal that bird or not. Her values made that decision for her. Who she is made that decision for her. She didn't have the slightest idea whether she could keep this bird alive. She knew nothing about crows. Nevertheless, it's all she knew was it was cold. So she gave it a water bottle and wrapped it up. The rest she had to find out for herself. That's a values decision. Once we know our values, they take us where we need to go. They make up our minds for us, but so many of us don't know what that is. Get a personality assessment if that's what you need to get you thinking about what do you believe in? 
What, will, what hill will you die on? The second thing that you need to do after a values assessment is that then you have to, I firmly believe that every single person, whether they're in business or whether they're not in business, absolutely must have some sort of marketing background. There, I've said it and I believe it. Can you think of any time in somebody's life that they haven't had to convince others of their value? Whether you're in business and you're selling a product, whether you're offering a service and therefore you're selling yourself, <laughs> whether you are just trying to convince someone to hire you, there are different ways and means of doing that. And I didn't have a marketing background. When I started my companies way back when, I had no idea about marketing. If I had known that, I would have saved myself years of grief and confidence bashing. So there's one, values analysis, two, get some sort of training in marketing, just fundamental. It doesn't have to be a PhD, but get something in marketing. And number three, learn to speak. Did you know that just by saying the word two, as in with a T and a pucker, two, that you are miles ahead of people that say ta. I'm going to the store, going to the store. That's not a word too. All of a sudden people listening to you, they don't notice that you're saying the word too properly. They just think you're really smart. The same with woulda, coulda, shoulda. Respect the language and people perceive you to be highly educated. It doesn't matter if you're using three letter words. If you pronounce them properly, people think you're really clever. That can't be a bad thing. To know that you are being received as intelligent and capable is a lot to do with your confidence level and that you are perceived as such is huge. And it's so simple. Just start by saying the word to. Learn to speak, learn to speak well. Those are, the, those are the tricks to getting ahead no matter where you are. Even if you're a, a mother and you're staying at home with the joy of raising your children, they will think that you're very, very clever and you know all the answers by doing tiny little things. That in turn, knowing that others believe in you is the biggest confidence boost you can ever get. I still, as, as, as you are talking, I'm remembering your talk in Las Vegas, and uh, but we're not gonna go there right now. <laughs> we can, perhaps your audience would like to know. <laughs> so um, we talk about confidence. You know, it's so easy mm -hmm. for some people to say, you know, confidence is within. It's not something you search from outside. But you and I know that it's not that easy. No, absolutely not. So when I think about myself, and oftentimes I use myself as an example because it's about going through the journey and learning through it. And oftentimes we have the confidence, we lack the confidence to do something because of an expectation that we have. It is not because it's real. It's because of the expectation that we have. It's a perceived expectation. That's really what I call it. That never really happened. But how can someone, especially someone that is in business, not have that derail them so that they can do what they want to do? Your confidence is all about your belief in yourself. Yeah. No one can give that to you because it's your own assessment of your own capabilities. To be, to be confident doesn't mean you're going to get everything right. To place the expectation that it's all going to be perfect is the recipe for disappointment. Uh -huh. The expectation that we're always going to be on, 
the expectation that we will not make a mistake, the, in, the, the expectation that we will never lose our cool, is pure folly. Human beings don't work like that. The greatest thing that we can do is freely admit our imperfections. When we need help, we reach out and get help. When we, we know our strengths, we also know our limitations, even if we don't want to. But by trying to strive for perfection, you're going to disappoint yourself because you're human. To be human is to be imperfect. To the only expectation you need to satisfy is the one you can live with. There's someone that said, uh, other people's opinion of you is none of your business. Absolutely. I have a little problem with that. Because if their opinion drips out of every word they say, then it becomes your business. They need to know that you set your own expectation. You're not here to please all the people in the world. You are here to make sure that I'm speaking from a leader's point of view and perhaps I ought not. A leader that is perfect is nothing but off limits. The expectation that my staff, my wonderful team put on me is the one that I have trained them to put on me. We train people how to treat us. What we will accept and what we don't accept. That doesn't mean we throw a hissy fit every time someone doesn't treat us brilliantly. But it does mean that there are, for example, I have never encountered a glass ceiling because I do not acknowledge its existence. That expectation that I'm going to rise to a level where I must stop does not exist in my brain. So it doesn't affect me in the slightest. Women talk about the glass ceiling all the time, that they can't move forward because they're a woman or for some other reason, mm -hmm. to which I say that's an attitude and it is self-imposed. We do the best we can with everything we do. If it's not perfect, great. It gives you something else to try for. When you stop growing, you start dying. When you stop learning, you start dying. To reach, to reach an expectation that's unreasonable is your own fault. Own it. Admit your shortcomings. We all have them. To pretend otherwise is to be a liar to yourself. If confidence is your trust in yourself and you're creating unreasonable expectations for yourself, then you're lying to yourself. How can you trust yourself after that? We must admit our shortcomings. We must admit our failures. We must confess our failures. In doing so, we become honest with ourselves, even though we don't want to hear it. And honesty with ourselves means we can trust ourselves. Then we can start to build confidence in ourselves. If someone else imposes unrealistic expectations, we have mouths. We can say, I can't do that in that time frame. I will need extra help. I can't fulfill that expectation. I need something to do it with. You don't just say no. You say, I can do it if I had. Thereby bringing your, your team with you as you climb. I love that. I love that. You know, as I'm listening to you, I'm listening about the work that you do, which we're going to talk later on, talk about later on. I know that um, for some people, for me, in the past, the old Christie, one of the reasons that confidence really 
one of the many reasons because we i mean i have so many reasons one of the confident one of the reasons that confidence held me back was i now realize what it was that say for example i, I was trying to do something right giving an excuse why i couldn't do it or why i shouldn't do it right is really for me that if I get to do it and succeed, then I have no more reasons. If I do it and I succeed, I don't have no more excuse. So I always have to use that to prove my point. See, that's why, because of this. But in actuality, if I really set my mind, I know I could do it. It's a matter of wanting to. Yes. It's that end. We must be careful what we wish for in case it comes true. I wish I was the president of company. Do you? <laughs> Are you aware of everything that comes into that? But remember this, you only gain confidence by struggling a little. Now, I don't mean, I don't mean getting completely wiped out or going into a war zone. What I do mean is that when there's a little struggle, the confidence grows like crazy. If it's too easy, if you already knew how to ride a bicycle, you would have no appreciation for others that cannot. Absolutely. If you have no appreciation for other people's struggles, you cannot help them. I was talking with my husband the other day, and he came to the realization that human beings' purpose on this earth as compared to trees and tigers and rivers and all the other things that are on this earth. The purpose for human beings is to learn how to work as a team, is to grow into a unified group of individuals that help each other. Now, coming from a very left brain engineered and it, my husband's an engineer. He says, left brain as they come. For him to come to the realization that the purpose of human beings is to make life easier for all human beings, that's a pretty right brain to think. So if he can think like that, what women are doing is bringing that into business because that's what we believe. Women are very good at teamwork. Yeah. Now, that said, I must qualify. I know a lot of women that have never progressed past the grade eight nastiest creature ever created on God's green earth attitude. Grade eight girls are mean to each other, but mostly to themselves. Some people never get past it. Some people are so insecure that they must downplay others' accomplishments in order to make themselves feel better. We can't sit beside someone who's more beautiful than we are because that reflects badly on us. We can't let someone else win because that makes us look less than. Mm -hmm. Instead of working together to make the world a better place, grade eight girls fight each other, tooth and nail. The mature individual knows that everybody can't be good at everything. Not everyone can be a runway model. Not everyone can be a doctor. Not everyone can be the best gardener in the world. Some people have brown thumbs, not green thumbs. The courage to admit your, your less than strong points is the path to confidence. You can't be good at everything. Choose, choose what you're doing right now and then realize that everything, everything is temporary. Everything is temporary and everything is going to change. So no matter what you're doing, it's just for a while. When I was teaching high school theater, uh, I'm very good at creating a safe place for people to make mistakes and learn from them and carry on. I spent every year, I spent from January until June counseling high school grade 12 students 
who now were faced with the decision of what to do after high school. It was such a huge decision for them. They had no confidence in their decision-making process. They had no confidence that they knew where they even wanted to go. And so my words to them were exactly that. <clears throat> You are not deciding what to do with the rest of your life. You're only deciding what to do with the next little while. If you choose to go out in the workforce, go out in the workforce knowing that you can always branch off. If you want to go to post-secondary, go to post-secondary knowing that there's always a chance to change it and do another post-secondary after that. Everything is only for a while. Instead of turning everything into a big mountain of a decision that just eats away at our confidence, distill it down to the next step. And know that you can do that now. Later, you can do the other. Everything is only for a while. Now, when you take that into consideration, doesn't everything become easier? Absolutely. The weight of the world gets lifted off your shoulders when you just narrow it down to the next step. To do that, you have to have a journey in mind. But even if you don't, what am I going? When we get up in the morning, we don't always have our day planned out minute by minute. <clears throat> but enough mornings, we learn what we like to do and we go with that. We can always change our mind and not go straight to the gym we can instead go for a run. Instead of having a breakfast of eggs and bacon and ham and toast and all of that kind of thing, we can change our mind and do a little work first. We can change everything. If you don't like it, after a while, change it. I went back to university when I was 40 to get my second degree. It was a degree in education. So I was at university with 18 year olds and 20 years old. So we had a table, we called it the geriatric table of uh, this group of, of people who went back to school to get another degree when they were already old. <laughs> I didn't think I was old. The people that I was working with, learning with could have been my children, but I was doing that for a while. And I've taught for a while. Now I'm doing this for a while. Confidence comes from knowing you can always change your mind. Nothing is permanent. And I think um, I think that uh, one of the one of the greatest things anyone can do when it comes to confidence is really being flexible. Because oftentimes, especially in business, just really being flexible. Oftentimes, we set out on a goal that this is what we want to do. And you're doing it and you know it's not working. Rather than mm -hmm. you really backing off and looking at it from a different perspective and being willing to reach out to perhaps someone who can help you if you're not able to do that, to reach out to maybe a community that can be able to support you in your growth. And oftentimes I see people, it's not working and they are still doing it. And even more so, it's hard for people to get that feedback, to receive, to be receptive to others' feedback, but you know, this is what's going to help you grow. And sometimes it may not feel good. And I've always said, forget about how somebody says it. If, it, if it's something you need, get the information and forget about how it is said. So having said that, we're talking about confidence, mm -hmm. entrepreneurial confidence in, you all are about confident stages. Tell me a little bit more about confident stages and why did you name it that? Well, as I said uh, when we started the show, in order to, to improve people's confidence, I went straight for the throat. If we could, if we could, you see, originally, confident stages was in my brilliant mind. <clears throat> I was going to help people be confident. I, was, mm -hmm. I had my programs, I had the curriculum built, and I was going to teach people 
confidence. <laughs> the major flaw with that theory is that people lacking confidence don't go out and sign up for confidence classes. Thank you. Cause that's exactly what I started with. You're right. right. Absolutely right. <clears throat> so I decided, well, all right, we'll go around the block with it. If I can teach people to speak. Yes. Then they've already conquered one of the greatest fears. Now, the thing about <clears throat> if you're a business and you open your mouth, you are giving a business presentation. Yes. If you have left the confines and the safety of your home and you are speaking even to the neighbor, you are representing your professional self. With any luck, your professional and your personal self are pretty darn close, but nevertheless, for example, I live in this very picturesque little town that are not quite ready for me. <laughs> they, they are very much tied and very proud of the town's past, mm. which is great. That's wonderful. I'm looking forward. So they're not quite ready for me. And although I was disappointed to discover that, it has in fact been a gift very often our disappointments turn out to be gifts because I don't do business with the people in my town. I don't have to be on point. I can go straight from my garden to the grocery store and I can look like a shlemiel and it'll be fine because I'm not doing business with any of them. That said, you still have to be careful because they know somebody. Everybody knows somebody. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a tickle. Please. When you open your mouth, you and you can like it or you can don't like it, but it's the truth. If you're in business and you say a single word, you are giving a business presentation. You are inviting them to like you, know you, trust you, and ultimately respect you and want to do business with you. If you stand with your hands in your pockets and one hip is sticking out on one side and your hair is messy and uh, you're just really, really casual. That is how people expect that you run your business. If that's how you run your business, great. If your business is a little bit more structured, then that's how you have to appear in or because there is nothing more trust breaking than appearing to be one way on camera, only to discover an entirely different you in person. That's the, that's the kiss of death. Be yourself, but be your best self. Awesome, awesome, I love that. So as we come to the close, I wanna ask you to share with our audience today, one thing that we can do to cultivate confidence. Learn who you are. Self-development is even more important than professional development. Do, do things that are pushing your comfort zone just a little. If you're terrified of public speaking, just tiptoe in. It doesn't mean that you're going to spend your life on stage and screen. But it does mean that, for example, just by knowing how to pronounce the word too properly and the benefits of that one single word, get a mentor. If you are terrified of public speaking, take a public speaking course, just a beginner one. Doesn't mean you're gonna do this forever. Get to know your weaknesses as intimately as your strengths. Knowing your weaknesses means that you have taken the first step to increasing the strength of those weaknesses. And then admit that they're weaknesses. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of intelligence. Awesome. You know, you're absolutely, absolutely right. Because oftentimes, like I was saying before, we, we are afraid or we fear doing something because we don't know what the outcome will be. In other words, it's just a perceived expectation of the outcome. 
But oftentimes when you really sit down and evaluate yourself and find out, and we're talking about confidence, whether it's confidence or fear, and you find out exactly, just think about what is it that you are fearful about? What is it that you you think that if you do something, it will happen? What is what is that? Because <clears throat> if you can tell yourself truly, what is that that is causing that fear, only then can you begin to do something about it. But until you do so, like you said, it's really, there's nothing you can do about it. But there's always something that you can do about it if you can identify what is causing the, the your lack of confidence or your fear, what is causing, if you can identify it, then you only then can you begin to do something about it. So I totally agree and absolutely you're right. The other thing that we absolutely, absolutely have to learn to do is forgive ourselves. Mm -hmm. We forgive others, but we use our past as a baseball bat to hit ourselves in the head with, instead of using it as a school classroom. Mm -hmm. Learn from the mistakes. Yeah. Learn to love what you perceive to be your weaknesses as much as what you perceive to be your strengths. They make you you, and you can't be anybody else. And you never want to show yourself as anything but the best version of you, because otherwise there is trust. And with it, with it, without trust, there can be no uh, happy ending. Thank you very much. And um, I just wanna ask you at this point, I know you have something for our audience and can you share with us how they can engage working with you or any offer that you have? I would absolutely love to offer anyone that's listening. If you contact me at R Barnes, B A R N E S, at confidentstages.com, I am more than happy to work with you on your specific issue, issue for a whole hour. I am more than happy to give you a free hour of my time for whatever your confidence issue may be. Just call me and you'll find me very easy to talk to. Can you um, put your information on the chat, if you don't mind, on your comment section? Can yeah. you see it? Uh, I don't see a chat. Okay, okay. Sometimes. I can do it oh, there. It Private chat. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Here, we go. Here we go. I found it. I okay. can do it. So I just want to thank you so much. It has really been a pleasure. And thank you for your patience for really trying to hash these technical issues out. We went in and we came back. We went in and you were so patient just waiting until we all hash it out. So thank you so much. And um, for all the people that are watching and those that will be watching later on, I appreciate each of you. And we do this every Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. However, sometime depending on what part of the world the guest is, we may have a special time to do it, but I'll always keep you informed what the special time is. Until next time, listen, my name is Christy Iwuchuku, and I am reminding you that the world is waiting for you to rock your brilliance. Why? Because your fingerprint is by design and not by choice. Until next time, everybody. Bye-bye. We'll do it again next Monday. Bye, Mary. Bye. Bye. I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye-bye. Okay, my dear. Bye-bye.